On this episode of The Failure Report, we examine how aspiring songwriter Channing Moreland went from booking musicians for frat parties to connecting tech systems that helps connect vetted musicians to companies and event planners. Even more is a disruptive force for good music. So, full disclosure, on this episode of The Failure Report, I was coming down with the flu. I continuously called Channing Moreland McKenzie, which is her business partner. I'm so sorry to both of you ladies. I appreciate you guys being such great sports. Here is my report with mega change agent Channing Moreland. I appreciate you joining the failure report. I mean, who wants to talk about this stuff? <laughs> well, you know, when you first told me about what you were doing, I was mm-hmm. like, I was, it was scary yeah. at first. Yeah, you know, yeah. just the word failure has mm-hmm. so much of a connotation to it, but we go through it every day. Every day. You know, like we've talked about. So yeah. We I said, love being here. Sometimes you fail minute by minute as an entrepreneur. You know, it's like, I'm doing so great. I'm doing such a great job. I'm a rock star. And it's like, oh gosh, I suck. I'm so behind. Everybody's <laughs> advancing and look at where I am. So, you know, failures are real. They happen for, they happen for a reason. Um, we're in them for a reason. And we have to learn from those mistakes. So yes. that's the whole premise of this show. And I'm so glad that you took the opportunity to speak with us. I'm thrilled. Thank Absolutely. You. So, you know, we're going to jump right in. I want you to tell us about yourself. Tell me about what you do, how you landed in Nashville, all the above. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I was totally that music freak yeah. kid growing up. Mm-hmm. I, you know, was learning all different kinds of instruments, mm-hmm. loved performing music, and I knew I wanted to maybe go to a conservatory yeah. um, on the East Coast and West Coast, because being from Boston, that's just what I knew. Yeah, yeah. And... Last minute, found out about the songwriting program uh, in Nashville at Belmont University. Mm -hmm. And I just took a chance on it and was accepted. And I hadn't even looked at, I hadn't even been to Tennessee before that. (laughs) And so I came down here and and looked at everything and it just felt so right. It was, you know, it was about coming on seven years ago now. Mm -hmm. And it was right before this boom we are are seeing. And it was almost like you could feel this energy about to happen. And I just knew in a weird way that I had to be here. And so I came here and then the story that I love is that I came for orientation for Belmont and I just happened to walk in with Mackenzie Stokel, my now business partner. We just happened to walk in at the same time and because we did, they, were, they said, okay, you're roommates for orientation. I'm serious. That's how roommates were selected. And that's, they were like, there you go. And we're like, wow, that's pretty. Uh, well, I live with you random. for four years. <laughs> sure. Oh, <laughs> and it was luckily, it was, well, not luckily, it was just mm-hmm. orientation. So it was a couple of days. And yeah. we just, and we ended up living on the same floor that year. And that's just when everything, you know, all the ideas came. We yeah. started putting on events together. We started building technology together. And that's an interesting history. history. <laughs> yeah. Right. So tell me about your company. Yes. Yeah. So we're called Eva Moore. Yes, and I love Eva, it. we wanted a female focused name. Mm-hmm. And we also wanted, you know, because we're a tech platform mm-hmm. and we're automating a service that's always been very hands on. Right. Because what we're doing is we're providing a way for artists vetted artists and entertainers to be connected to paid opportunities wow. through corporate and private events. Wow. And so this was always something that, you know, was very handhold and we wanted a, a person to feel like it was always helping you. So that Eva yeah. and then Eva also stands for events, venues and artists just because Which I love. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so much sense. And so you say vetted musicians. Mm-hmm. What does that look like? So we, this is, I can sing, but am I like, <laughs> mm, 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 mm. no, I, have a fe- I don't know. I have a feeling you'd be pretty, pretty verified on our, on our platform, but we do, we, we knew one of our core values when we first started was, you know, we were looking around and we saw all this incredible talent mm-hmm. and it was a next level up of just, you know, for us, talent is just one of the five things we're looking at. Okay. It's poise, charisma, mm. responsibility, versatility. Yeah. How are you, you know, as a business person too, mm-hmm. in, in relation to your performance as well? Right. And right. so we wanted to take a twist on that. And it's just like a, a booking agency is really going to vet their roster. They're going to go out there and really make that relationship. But for us, we saw such a hole in the market for corporate events and private events. Yeah, and, I saw one of your um, clients has been BMW. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, they've we've worked with our um, client partners to work with BMW, and they had an exa- um, a couple executive summits in Nashville and a couple of other events as well. And, you know, mm-hmm. they wanted 
singer songwriters. They wanted bands. They wanted right. different experiences. But the key thing when we vet the artists is they also need to understand that this isn't their party. Yeah, it's not a paid ticket to come and see them Mm -hmm. but it is great additive revenue so that's what we really try to showcase yeah and being in music city usa i'm sure you're not at any deficit of artists that are spectacular join effort business and marketing consulting specializes in finding solutions for startups small businesses and nonprofits. we offer branding marketing social media management development, and capacity building consulting services to companies who are just starting out or need help taking their business to the next level. Please contact us online for a consultation at joineffortllc.com or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at joineffortllc. How has it been with working with artists who um, are just kind of new on the scene or really trying to make their space, you know, or kind of make their name in this arena? Are you finding that you have a shortage of artists or a shortage of clients or is there no such thing as a shortage? (laughs) Such a great question because we didn't even understand what we were getting ourselves Mm -hmm. into Mm -hmm. when it really came to not only a a marketplace, but with artists and with event planners. Like we, I feel like we had just chosen like the hardest thing, but The whole reason we got into this is because there was so much incredible up-and-coming talent that wasn't being heard. Mm -hmm. So we always really had a great roster to start with. And growing to other regions now, we have found our sweet spot is about 100 to 150 acts per region. Gives us enough genres to work with, gives us enough like ever-curated rotation. So that's really good. So, But the event planners have was definitely in the event buyer's that was the really hard one to just understand yeah. because we built this in college initially. So we were servicing Greek life, which let me tell you, that was a big fail <laughs> for us. Greek life and servicing campus organizations. Mm. It's just what we knew. Yeah, it was easy. and It was accessible. It's right there. Tell me about one of the failures that you experienced working in that arena. I'm sure that was fun. Oh, man. Okay, so Dion, I just, <laughs> I remember, you know, we had a year left in school mm-hmm. and even even when we were out of school still hustling mm-hmm. you know with campus organizations I remember Mackenzie and I would skip class to go and try and make sales on mm-hmm. other campuses because actually our campus was not an ideal client wow. we had to go to mm-hmm. SEC we had to go to bigger organizations to find um, people with budgets that we could work with right. and I remember you know we just we didn't know how to do it mm-hmm. we we didn't know how to sell to them and Mackenzie and I literally, it felt like I was trick-or-treating, but getting slammed in the face with no candy every (laughs) single time. We would literally go up to these kids' houses, Mm -hmm. you know, these Greek life houses. I didn't want that to be our client. I love them. You know, they're great. But can you imagine, you know, you're a a college student being your client overseeing a massive budget. Mm -hmm. And I remember just knocking on the door time and time again. And I literally felt like an anvil, like salesman. And it felt... It just didn't feel good. And we were told no all the time, and we just knew it wasn't sustainable. Mm. We weren't making the revenue we did to stay open, and it was a big fail. It was a big fail. We had to pivot fast. Yeah, and and, and I would love to talk about that idea of when you knew it was a failure, because that's the question I get all the time, is how do you know when I'm in a situation that is not being productive? You know what I mean? So is it that it was the fourth no, if it was that it just didn't (laughs) feel right? When When did you know this isn't it? Okay, so when we graduated, we mm-hmm. we at least knew that we needed to actually go and build the full platform now. Right. You know, we, we got some initial investment. We had a set roadmap of what we needed to do. Mm-hmm. So if anything, we, we needed to build the platform to then know, can this work? So j- let's jump to 2017 now. Mm-hmm. We spend the whole year vetting, and we're vetting college campuses, and we're booking at like 35 campuses at that time. And all of a sudden, you know, in the fall, Mm-hmm. I started just, you know, I, I just looked at the churn of these clients. And I'm like, this is going to be impossible to scale. Mm-hmm. When we really yeah. start thinking about scale and what is our true value of the business is we want to be bigger than just us. Yeah. And yeah. with this client, technically, they're changing every couple of years. Mm-hmm. And so then we started just seeing naturally, we started opening ourselves and becoming receptive to maybe what other clients we weren't paying attention to. Mm-hmm. And we saw corporations, we saw high profile weddings, we saw private events just coming to the platform. Yeah. But here we were so tunnel vision on college because that's what we were doing. Yeah. And so I remember in 2018, February, mm-hmm. Mackenzie and I took a hard look at it 
And we said, look at the past couple of months. Look at who's starting to use the platform. And we said to each other, we said, what if we just don't touch college this month? Let's just see what happens. So last year, we looked at it and, you know, winter's always a dark time. Yes, it and is. It, yeah. it, it, <laughs> we're just like, okay, let's just not even touch it and let's just see. And our sales tripled in one month. We were like, it's crazy. Okay, yeah. you know, yeah. it was it was so clear at that point. So that's yeah. when we were like, goodbye, cut it, yeah. pivot, be yeah. done with it. Be done with that. And mm-hmm. it is. It's, it was one of those comfort things, you know what yeah. I mean? Because some individuals stay the course because they're like, this is what I know. I'm also young in business, and this is a target demographic that identifies with me. So it's just easier. Mm-hmm. But you went a harder route. Mm-hmm. And you said, I'm not going to stay where I feel most comfortable. I'm going to go... A, where the money is, yeah. <laughs> and then where there is, you know, additional opportunities. How was it kind of pitching to that first client? Wow. I mean, I think that we were lucky because we had, I mean, this community in Nashville, mm-hmm. they're they're so kind. That's, and they were... the South, honey. I know, right? <laughs> and it was more like we got to have some baby steps with it first. Yeah. It was with trusted people, almost with friends, Mm -hmm. they were showing us the opportunity as clients themselves. And so we really got to work with a couple of very like trusted people um, in that first time. But I do remember when I realized I was in over my head and Mm -hmm. when we needed to take a step back and actually really look at the full scope of corporate Mm -hmm. is when I just, I realized that yes, our platform was a product fit for them, Mm -hmm. but that we didn't know jack shit about the customer at all because we didn't realize that oh they need you know this kind of insurance for even more to even be a qualified Mm -hmm. vendor they need us to do this kind of advance they need the platform to do this kind of invoicing like there was all these things that we really had to take a step back you just you know in uh in early 2019 and say, whoa, stop, yeah. pause, let's learn it all, and now let's scale. Yeah. Thank you to the Fairlane Hotel located in Nashville, Tennessee, for allowing us to record this episode in their business center. This retro, modern, boutique hotel is nestled behind the mid-century modern facade where savvy travelers experience impeccable service with a timeless appeal of classic style. Next time you're in the Music City, you must stay at the Fairlane Hotel. Oh, and check out our Instagram where you can see the amazing photo shoot I took in their lobby. I love a good story of triumph, but what I can't help but to notice is your age. (laughs) You know, I know that you all have been are are professionals and subject matter experts, but I mean, you know, I want to give a shout out to saying I'm a young entrepreneur. I'm a female young entrepreneur. Can you tell me about like when you graduated from college, how that's looked to even your clients? Because I know a lot of young, especially young women. Um, but young people have a hard time breaking into a corporate platform mm-hmm. and being concerned about their age. You know, mm-hmm. we're talking about like true imposter syndrome. Yeah. So tell me about that because you, I mean, you're gorgeous. But, um, you. you know, but talk about, you know, having to navigate these spaces um, at such a young age. <sighs> okay, I want to be, I'm just, I want to be honest that, you know, when, when Mackenzie and I, when we were accepted into this music tech accelerator when we were juniors in college, it it catapulted us into the real world, mm-hmm. the life. You know, we mm-hmm. were 19. Yeah. You know, we weren't of drinking age. We were thrown into the music <laughs> industry. We were right. the next, you know, youngest person in this accelerator was 10 years older than us. Wow. And we were the only female. So it was very male dominated. And, you know, I immediately created almost this shell, like, mm-hmm. zoop, and yeah. almost like, I'm good, I'm fine. You know, yeah. I got this. And I've really had to like, work through that and break that down and look at you know what happened to me and the answer is it it wasn't easy for me personally to be authentic initially Mm -hmm. because I felt like I had to be something I just wasn't right felt like I had to be the strong capable she knows all the answers don't mess with me don't mess with us um and so I really and what that also turned into was I felt like I had to have a drink in my hand when I walked into a networking mm. event so that people, will, you know, would think I was of age. Yeah. I felt like I had to be at certain things. I felt like I had to say certain things. And yeah. so all that to be said, yeah. it wasn't pretty. You sure. know, I didn't do it right the first time. Mm. And I really took a step back last last year in 2018. I took a step back and said that, 
this is not healthy. This is not sustainable. And you just need to be okay with who you are. With who you are. The true you. The mm-hmm. true who you, who you are. I mean, and we do that so often. You yeah. know what I mean? And I, I really do consider that a huge misstep. Yeah. Even at my age, currently, uh, as of today, being 37 years old, approaching 38, I still feel like I need to be 40 for, to be respected. So it's always like... Because, you know, we work in such a male dominant, um, like, yo, you young bucks don't know anything. You've mm-hmm. not lived. You don't have any grit and gut. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you don't know what I've been through. Mm-hmm. You don't know how I've had to produce and create and even pretend to be something that I'm not to make it to where I want to mm-hmm. be. And those are, you know, sometimes things that we feel as if we have to do. So when did it, you said in 2018, mm-hmm. you just kind of snapped out of it and you're like, Started started to started, snap out yeah. of it for mm-hmm. sure. I what well, honestly what I did was I I took a step back and I looked at you know what did what did even drinking become for me? What body image issues had become? What mm-hmm. you know food had become for me? Just like those things. And I also took a step back and said you know what when do I feel really good? Leading in Color is a podcast hosted by Dion Stokes, founder of Joint Effort Business Marketing Consulting, and me. Marta Miranda Straub, founder of Catapult Now, an organization and leadership development and training firm. We thrive on engaging in raw, courageous conversations and topics that unpack systems of oppression that impact leaders at the margins of white, patriarchal culture. So I went to the protest, and when I went to the protest, there weren't a lot of white faces in the crowd. And I thought, what's wrong with this scenario? Because, you know, people have been organizing around all these issues. And in the the white activist community, there was this question, why don't black people join our movements? Right. As opposed to, why aren't we at the table in their movement? We are passionate about naming and dismantling the barriers of implicit bias, raising consciousness, and forging new ways to think about leadership that does not replicate power over others and create transformational leadership models based on systems of liberation. Join Leading in Color. Join the revolution. That's perfect. And when do I feel my most authentic self? Mm -hmm. And it's when I've incorporated a morning routine for myself, when I've incorporated wellness, when I when I know it's okay for me to do that for myself too. Mm -hmm. And then I'm so much stronger of an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. and um, of a CEO. And so I started just implementing what I needed Mm -hmm. and not what other people needed. And, you know, as a, as an empath and a people pleaser, I mess up every day. You know, I, I won't allow myself certain things or I'll give too much out, but I feel now, you know, especially in this phase of life, Mm -hmm. I, I'm calm, yeah. I'm happy, I'm focused, yeah. and I'm just okay with being who I am. Who you are. In it. Yeah. But it definitely is, It's a, I think it's an ever... It is. Ever. <laughs> ever changing. Yeah. yeah. We we had the honor of meeting at the 3686 conference mm-hmm. here in Nashville. And during our, we were both speakers at that conference. And during your speech, you said, you know, and, uh, you know, we go through these things and it's mental wellness. I mean, mental wellness. And <laughs> it was a Freudian slip that like changed the cadence of our whole audience that, you know, we were able to take, you know, kind of a and a from. I would love to talk about the failures that you've made in mental health and stability. You know, you mm-hmm. talk about body image. Music is a very sexy industry. Mm-hmm. Um, we have to sometimes as we feel as if as females. We have to use our sexuality to get the things that we want. Mm -hmm. Um, How has that played out, or have you seen that as something that has played out in in what you and McKinsey do? Definitely. Yeah. You know, um, I found myself at the beginning of this journey, even, you know, kind of like that feeling like you need to be 40. I had like high button ups and like very male energy and I was like, don't fuck with me. Yeah. Like, I, like it was, it was strong. Right, and, right. and because I was almost scared because I did have some bad experiences mm-hmm. with being yeah. taken advantage of, you know, yeah. it's the music industry sure. and there's, well, yeah. you know, the older guys sure. and it wasn't, it, it wasn't fun. It right. wasn't good to experience. So I kind of create, that's that shell mm-hmm. I was referring to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what's happened now is because I'm just strong in myself and I've built a really strong team around me of, you know, of mentors, advisors, friends that I go to, I don't have to worry about that shell. So I'm much more relaxed and calm with it. But also I think it's okay to 
I've learned it's okay to have that like female energy mm-hmm. and that fun side, but yeah. just be protective of yourself sure. and don't let anyone take advantage of you, of me, of, <laughs> you, of me, of us, yes. of the people. Yes. <laughs> right. don't. I love that, Mackenzie. I think that's a really good place to, to stop because gosh, I mean, we don't know those things, you know what I mean? And especially as female entrepreneurs, we we really see it as a as a weakness. But mm-hmm. that is where you find your strength. I love that. I love that. Mackenzie, so I have a few more questions. Mm-hmm. I like to play a little game, and it's called One's Gotta Go. Uh, I love to shout out Kev on stage. I've heard this on his show first, so I'm definitely pulling this from him. But I love this game. Are you ready? Yes. One's Gotta Go. A city. You're not from Nashville. Right. Mm-hmm. One's got to go. A city. L.A., Chicago, New York, or Miami? Mm, oh. Right? <laughs> oh, man. I feel so bad saying this, but I would say Miami yeah. just because I need to go to Chicago, New York, and L.A. That's a little selfish. But there you go. Sorry, I need those. Miami. There you go. She's got to go. <laughs> Restaurants, if you can call it this. Mm-hmm. McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, or Chick-fil-A? I would say... To boot the Burger King. Yeah. yeah. Not even with the Impossible Burger. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, that does. But I'm sure. Yeah, no. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and let's see. You are in the South. Mm-hmm. I know you've probably gotten well acquainted with the cuisine. Mm-hmm. So a breakfast food has to go. Okay. Bacon, mm-hmm. eggs, pancakes, or grits. Now watch out, you're in Nashville, so don't disrespect the grits. But no, nope. <laughs> I would actually say goodbye bacon, just because. <gasps> goodbye bacon. Goodbye bacon. I love it. Yeah, I love it. How about <laughs> the pancakes, the grits, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all of it, all of it. So it's time for shameless shout outs. Yes, I would love for you to shout out uh, your company, your partner, your investors, and what you do, and tell people where they can find you because I want everybody to follow you and endorse what you do. Yes. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, my name is Channing Moreland. My business partner is Mackenzie Stokel. We are the co-founders of Eva Moore and you can find us at www.evamore.co. We also are on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just a shout out to my team. They're incredible. It's yeah. been really excited to gr- it's been really exciting to grow that this yeah. year and our investors are <laughs> amazing. Yes. They're the reason we're here. And yes, because you have a a strong team. How many individuals do you have on team to date? So we have a a, so there's four full time and me. Mm -hmm. So there's five. And then we have four contractors that we're moving to full time right now. So when we all sit in a room, it feels, you know, like we're we're here. Feels like, you know, nine to ten people. Yeah, we're here. We're focused. We're about this life. That is fantastic. You guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Failure Report. Of course, you can find us also on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, Mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, on IGTV, on Facebook Watch, I could oh on Pinterest. Like, what was I all thinking? Things. No, all the things <laughs> at the Failure Report. Um, there is one that's Twitter. You know, somebody's got to be the odd man out. Uh, at Twitter, we're at Report Failure. But but everyone else, find us at the Failure Report. Uh, also at um, Joint Effort uh, LLC.com backslash Failure Report. You know, as you know, I own a marketing firm. This is something that I'm passionate about. It's something that I feel like is important to talk about. And this is something I have just had such a blast talking with you about, Mackenzie. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you to those who sponsored and supported this episode. And the biggest thank you to Sophia Mobley Photography and Videography for being the dopest producer, sound engineer, and editor in the land. Please like, share, and subscribe at The Failure Report on YouTube, Facebook, Facebook Watch, Instagram, IGTV, and on Twitter at Report Failure since The Failure Report was taken. You can listen on Spotify, iTunes Podcasts, or wherever you consume content. To get notifications on our upcoming episodes, please visit our website at thefailurereport.org. There you can subscribe to become a fellow failure and get access to our blog and merchandise. We have things like mugs, t-shirts, notepads, you know, all the things. I'm Dion Stokes. Thanks so much for listening.